Hey guys, Wraith Crew here. Today, I'll be discussing and talking about the strongest weapons in Apex Legends. I've compiled a tier list of all the weapons, as you can see here, and I'll talk about why each weapon is placed where it is. The point of this tier list and video is to help newer players understand the meta and a refresher for players returning after a break. Like I said, I'll be talking about each weapon and why it's placed where it is on the tier list. This will help you expect what weapons are good, and I'll discuss the strengths and weaknesses of each weapon so hopefully you can learn how to utilize them more effectively yourself in combat. Below, I'll have timestamps for each of the weapons and tiers so you can skip to whatever weapon or tier you would like. Below, additionally, is a link to my Discord server with this tier list in image form so you can save it or use it wherever you'd like. In my Discord, additionally, there's a bunch more resources like this coming soon, as well as compilations of other useful resources such as videos, guides, and everything else. If you'd like to join, I'd appreciate it, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Starting off with the S tier. Starting with the S tier here, we have extremely powerful weapons that affect every level of play in Apex, and they also single-handedly have the ability to alter the outcome of a game. These are the weapons that can single-handedly win you the game. And while most of them are care package weapons, there's also two ground loot weapons sprinkled in here. Up first, we have the care package RE45. It's without doubt that the RE45 is the best weapon in the game right now. The RE45 has pinpoint hipfire accuracy, as well as an extremely fast time to kill that can melt enemies within less than a second. Additionally, the RE45 has really good range when ADSing and doesn't have much bullet drop off. On top of that, it has extremely fast handling times, being ADSed almost instantly, put out, reloaded, and put back out almost instantly. On top of that, it has a very solid ammo count for being in the care package and can melt through several squads before you find yourself having to pick up another weapon. This weapon is by far the best weapon in the game right now. Up next, we have the Kraber. The Kraber would be in the number one spot had it not received its headshot nerf quite a while ago. However, the Kraber is still insanely useful and very dangerous in most situations. Not all squads can get the loot to prevent them from being headshot by a Kraber. Especially in the late game, this weapon can single-handedly win you fights. However, this weapon does have some very clearly defined downsides. There's a long rechamber time in between each shot, and the reload times can be extremely long. However, the massive damage per bullet outweighs this, and it's very easy to single-handedly turn fights around through the use of one Kraber shot, hip-fired or scoped. Up next, we have our first ground loot weapon, the Car SMG. The Car SMG is the best ground loot weapon in the game right now. The Car SMG not only uses both of the most common ammo types on the ground, giving it extreme versatility. It, its most important attachment, the magazine, can use both light or heavy magazines, the most commonly spawning magazines in the game. Additionally, the car SMG does not require a laser sight to be used effectively. You can still get up close to enemies and do better than you can with some of the other SMGs that require a laser sight. On top of that, the weapon has one of the fastest time to kills in the game, even against red or purple armor, just really stacking it up to be one of the best weapons in the game. I would expect this weapon to be nerfed at some point in the future, but for right now, enjoy all of its benefits and how good it feels to use in the game. Additionally, the car has pretty decent range on it. You can use it from anywhere in the close to far ranges and get some pretty good success with it. Up next, we have the bow check bow. The bow check has extremely high damage per shot, and this high damage rivals that of the Kraber. You can single-handedly make opportunities for your team to push or support your teammates very well from afar when using the bow check. On top of that, the bow check has a very fast fire rate, especially when tempo is enabled, allowing you to shoot extremely fast and punish your enemies with a pelt of arrows. Additionally, the weapon has an extremely high ammo count leading you to be able to poke a lot of the time you would not really feel comfortable being able to do so the only downside is that it is modestly unreliable in close range with the shatter caps hop up up next we have our last weapon in s tier a ground loot g7 scout the g7 scout dominates a lot of pro play and a lot of high level play in apex legends and if you and if you queue into a diamond lobby or higher you're basically going to see this gun run across the board 
Even in lower ranks, this weapon can do extremely well because it is extremely easy to control and it's not that hard to get up and running. Where the iron sights on it are pretty poor, throwing a simple 2x scope on it gives you a lot of versatility in what you can do with the weapon and combined with its high magazine size with a white or higher mag you can spam down enemies and spam down chokes and easily even if your aim isn't the greatest you're given a lot of leeway to actually punish enemies in a lot of different ways the moderate damage per bullet combined with the fast fire rate and high magazine size allows you to spam a lot of choke ways and spam at people that are rotating across the map and perhaps even generate a few kills the weapon is also pretty reliable in close range Close enough that you can run something like a G7 and a shotgun to absolutely capitalize on the weapon's all well-roundedness. On top of this, the double tap trigger recently got a buff and it is extremely easy to control. It's recoil now, giving you large burst potential in either range that you're going to use the G7 at. The longer ranges or even up close, it makes it better for fighting close range enemies. Up next, we have the A tier. All of these weapons are very strong and they dominate in most engagements single-handedly with no or very few downsides actually to them. Starting at the top of this list, we have the Wingman. The Wingman would originally be in S tier, but I'll talk about why it's kind of fallen a little bit. The Wingman has a fast time to kill even if you only land body shots. However, the headshot potential and multiplier of the Wingman really sets it apart from all the other weapons. On top of this, the wingman can effectively be used in far or close range, leading it to dominate in all the spaces where it can actively be shot at by a really good player. Throw a 2x scope on it and suddenly you're challenging snipers across the map with your really fast strafe speed. On top of that, the fast strafe speed makes you really difficult to hit and can make aiming a little bit harder, but once you're accustomed to this difference in speed, it makes it really hard for opponents to hit you, as your stray speed is so irregular compared to the rest of the weapons that it will catch them off guard. On top of that, the weapon reloads rather quickly and is pulled out and stowed away pretty quickly as well, leading it to be a completely reliable sidearm or even primary weapon. Finally, the weapon has a very solid hip fire. If you don't feel comfortable in your aim, you can very easily just let the hip fire of the wingman rip, or in situations where you don't have enough time to precisely aim, you can easily just let the hip fire take the wheel for you. So why is the wingman no longer in S tier? The wingman suffers now in ammo efficiency. You can't carry a ton of ammo without sacrificing some slots in your inventory. Additionally, sniper weapons and attachments are harder to find across the map. And the magazine is such a core component of the wingman, almost doubling its base size when you actually get a preferable mag on it. Up next, we have the Peacekeeper. While the Peacekeeper was thrown into the crafter for the first half of season 15, the current season this video is being recorded in, the Peacekeeper is still by far the best shotgun in the game if you're looking to run a shotgun with your kit. It is very much well worth crafting. Now, what makes the Peacekeeper so good in comparison to other weapons? Well, as I'll talk about later, the Mastiff has fallen off as a close range combatant with other things like the SMGs being so good now. Additionally, the Peacekeeper does so much damage, it's hard to actually compete with it. And it's, and it's very consistent to use. There's no other weapon that dominates in this style of play of jiggle peeking as much as the Peacekeeper does for as little effort as it requires. So if you're looking to use a shotgun, you should very likely be crafting a Peacekeeper every game. It's very good in these close range fights when nobody really runs a Peacekeeper. If you craft one, you're already at an advantage because no other weapon fills this role in the category right now. Additionally, it's good in not only close but medium ranges because of the precision choke. And like I said earlier, the weapon is pretty reliable in these ranges regardless. You can easily finish off enemies or make openings with things like a fully charged choke to act as a sniper and then finish them off with an SMG burst. Next, in the A tier, we have our lowest rated care package weapon, the Rampage LMG. The Rampage is better than all of the other ARs and SMGs below it, and the reason why is because its fire rate is extremely dangerous when charged up. However, the caveat being that charging it up requires active inventory management with using thermites, and sometimes thermites are better used as grenades to throw in the midst of a fight rather than throw in your Rampage. However, the fast fire rate of the Rampage can and will catch your enemies off guard and can be extremely useful against all the other weapon classes in the game. It outpaces all other ARs, SMGs, and snipers and can easily burst down enemies and break down doors when no one is expecting it. 
If the Rampage did not need to be charged up consistently, it would easily be an S tier weapon, but because of its reliance on eating your Thermites, it is only ranked in the A tier. Up next, we have the Flatline and the R301. These are the only weapons to be grouped together because the differences between the two are very minimal. Some people will prefer the Flatline and some people will prefer the R301. I did a weapon quiz a couple weeks ago and it showed a majority of people prefer using the R301 over the Flatline, which is understandable. The R301 is way easier to control and has the same damage output in each magazine as the Flatline does. However, each Flatline bullet does slightly more damage, but its fire rate is slightly lower. So it's up to you and your playstyle and what weapons you like to use. The Flatline does have the problem that it has worse hip fire spread and worse recoil control. However, if you play around these and understand these factors, you can easily counteract it. Additionally, it is slightly easier to find attachments for the R301 as compared to the Flatline. However, the R301 needs these attachments more than the Flatline does. So overall, the placement between these two ARs is dependent on you, your playstyle, and your own preferences, so I'm leaving it up to you, the viewer, to decide what you like more or what you dislike more. These weapons both excel in the really close range, as well as the medium and very far ranges, as you probably know. These ARs are very good at shooting people from far away and poking. Up next, we have the B tier. The B tier is full of effective weapons that excel in specific engagements but have clearly defined weaknesses. So starting off this tier, we have the Volt. The Volt is a fairly reliable SMG with its downsides. The Volt has a very solid and fast time to kill, but it does slightly fall short against the car and, and aforementioned ARs. However, the Volt is extremely easy to use and can basically be seen as a pocket AR. It just requires a moderately rare type of ammo as well as moderately rare type of attachments. You can typically find yourself running out of ammo with the Volt in a lot of situations because people prefer to run things like the car or the R9 over the Volt. You'll typically find yourself running out of ammo with the Volt unless you can secure a large stash of energy ammo from someone running another energy weapon. The Volt is by no means bad, it falls in the very middle of overperforming and underperforming. It just does its job and does it very well. Up next, we have the best ground loot shotgun in the game, the EVA 8. The EVA 8 has an insanely high fire rate and good damage per bullet, especially once you throw a magazine on it. On top of this, it has a pretty modest handling and reload speed once you actually get a stock thrown on it. The only downside this weapon has is that it can end up chewing through shotgun ammo pretty quickly. Sometimes I'll find myself using two stacks off drop and needing more beyond that. And additionally, double tap makes the weapon pretty difficult to use. And on top of that, it only ends up giving you four shots to use, which can be really disadvantageous if you're fighting multiple enemies at once. And especially if you end up missing one of your pumps. However, though, the EVA is by far the best ground loot shotgun, and I would advise you to pick this up if you don't want to craft a Peacekeeper or prefer the EVA personally. Up next, we have another energy weapon, the Havoc Rifle. The Havoc is a very well-balanced assault rifle in my mind. It has insanely high damage per bullet and insanely fast bullet travel time, but at the cost of a engine that needs to be revved up before you can start shooting. If you're jumped, this rev up time causes you to actually lose a lot of DPS and can single handedly get you killed in fights. However, this can completely be off-balanced by throwing on a turbocharger. A turbocharger removes this delay at the cost of minus one damage now. And this is a pretty good trade. However, the minus one damage can be felt a lot of the time, and it can really be a punch in the gut when enemies get away by just that one HP. Additionally, the Havoc has a very good mag size, gold mag, and especially when throwing on the higher tier magazines, you can really output a lot of damage before having to reload. The Havoc also has a very weird recoil pattern. It can be used pretty comfortably in the short to medium ranges. However, once you get a little bit further out, the recoil might be a little hard to control with a 3x scope. Despite all this, the Havoc is very balanced and I would put this weapon in the A tier if you feel comfortable using it. You might rate it a little bit lower because you find its recoil hard to control, but once you learn it, it's not that bad and it can be a very volatile weapon. Up next, we have the Spitfire. The Spitfire was once very extremely dominant and now it ends up falling to be rather mid, but still pretty strong in the right circumstances. So the Spitfire has high damage per bullet combined with a, with a pretty modest fire rate that falls a little bit short of other weapon types. However, this is negated by having an extremely large magazine that can wipe entire squads through just one magazine. However, the handling and reload times of the Spitfire are so atrocious 
that it really throws people off of using it. Additionally, the hip fire for the Spitfire is pretty bad. It's not really great, and it can really get you killed in a lot of situations where you don't want to actually ADS with the weapon. So where does the Spitfire excel? The Spitfire excels in punishing enemies for taking really long swings and wide swings in general. If someone's trying to cross out in the open, you would much prefer to have a Spitfire over something like an R301. However, since this weapon is currently in the crafter, I would not really recommend trying to craft it. And even when it eventually comes out of the crafter, I would still recommend using an R301 until it receives some buffs or the R301 is no longer available or receives some nerfs. Up next, we have the Charge Rifle. Debatably the best sniper rifle in the game, the Charge Rifle has a lot going for it, but also has clearly defined disadvantages. First, the hit scan nature of the beam makes it really, really good for poking damage and trying to either level up your armor or secure free KP when you're holding a spot in the zone or somewhere on the edge. Additionally, the weapon suffers from rather poor ammo efficiency, requiring two bullets per shot to actually shoot. However, the guaranteed damage of the hit scan nature typically offsets this a lot, and you'll typically get more value than you would with other weapons like the wingman, for example. The charge rifle also requires barely anything to get it started. All you really need is a scope and you're good to go. The weapon can't take magazines and the stock doesn't really do too much for it, except for decreased its handling times. The charge rifle, however, does fall off a little bit in close range, but in case you didn't know this, the final burst and beam of the charge rifle is pinpoint accurate to the center of your screen. So if you can master this, the charge rifle can actually become a modestly reliable weapon in this close range. Granted, you practice with it and know how to actually center targets on your screen. The only other downside of the charge rifle is that it, it has an extremely long reload time. So you have to be consciously smart of when you're shooting opponents. However, the guaranteed damage output and overall annoyingness of the charge rifle puts it really above the other sniper rifles because you don't have to worry about bullet drop and can easily farm enemies crossing out in the open or standing still looting boxes. Up next, we have our final weapon in the B tier, the 3030 Repeater. The 3030 is basically a balanced G7 Scout. While the G7 Scout sits in S tier for various reasons, the 3030 sits in the B tier for more balanced reasons. Essentially, the 3030 suffers because it has lots of downtime in between shots a long reload time having to rechamber bullets individually as well as the incentive to charge up your shots now while it is nice to land single damage shots it just does come at the disadvantage of the short magazine size even with a good mag in the 3030 once you deplete the magazine you find yourself having to reload for a long period of time compared to other weapons as well as the rechambering animation that happens after every shot, you typically find yourself doing less damage with a 3030 than you would something with a G7. The G7 is far spammier by nature, and this helps the weapon a lot out in a lot of situations. Where the 3030 only comes close with a no mag G7 when it has a purple mag in itself. The 3030 does have its benefits though. The 3030 is good for single poke engagements. For example, if you're trying to make an opportunity to fight, one skull piercer headshot can absolutely give you guys the opportunity to push up should you crack somebody that is very important on the team. Additionally, these individual shots can actually guarantee you kills. It's the reason why the longbow is rated down lower in this tier list because the 3030 does what the longbow does, but a little bit better. So the 3030 is not bad by any means, it just falls short compared to other weapons. Additionally, the hip fire of the 3030 is a little bit unreliable in actual combat and i find myself getting really frustrated at it because of its small mag size and unreliability in close range sometimes i'll absolutely destroy opponents and other times i won't land a single shot this makes the weapon really good in these medium to long ranges and as a little fun fact the 3030 has the same bullet drop as the kraber so if you're trying to practice long range shots with the kraber be sure to just pick up a 3030 instead and you'll be getting some practice in in no time up next, we have the C tier. These C tier weapons typically fall a little bit short in comparison to their higher tier competitors, but can still do things on their own. However, in most situations, I will advise that you just drop two weapons and pick up one of the higher tier rated versions instead. So starting off, we have the Prowler. The Prowler is by no means a bad SMG. It just is unreliable. The Prowler has a very fast time to kill, especially if you can land all of your shots or even headshots. However, 
The Prowler is extremely punishing when you miss shots. The long burst time guarantees that you won't be shooting for a good period of time until you actually get back on target or have to reload. The Prowler has extremely good hip fire accuracy, especially when paired with a laser sight. However, the somewhat long reload speed of the Prowler with the other SMGs in mind does kind of set it off as well as all the downtime in between shots. And additionally, the Prowler chews through ammo extremely fast. It is also a little bit magazine dependent. If you miss one burst on a target with purple armor, it becomes extremely difficult to actually kill them. Up next, we have the Mozambique. The Mozambique used to be a meme. However, the Mozambique has gotten a lot of buffs lately and it makes it a very reliable weapon. The Mozambique has an extremely fast fire rate with a six mag chamber. Especially paired with a purple bolt, you'll be shooting out all six shots extremely quickly. What most people don't know about the Mozambique is that it actually has extremely good range. Unless you're an arenas player, most people aren't really aware of the range the Mozambique has. It doesn't have any spread at all, so the bullets will go in a straight line and just be affected by bullet drop-off and none else. This combined with its fast fire rate makes the weapon extremely volatile against lower level armors. The average damage the Mozam will hit for is about 45 to the body, and you won't really get much higher than this. This makes the weapon fall off against higher armor values such as red and purple, as it can't reliably carry by itself and will require the assistance of another person or another weapon to actually finish off teammates or crack them. However, the Mozambique is extremely good off drop and you should not sleep on this weapon's potential off drop, especially should you get a bolt, you'll be chewing through white armors and your ammo supply pretty quickly. Additionally, when ADS, the Mozambique has a very fast strafe speed, very similar to the Wingman and other pistols. Up next, we have our next sniper, the Longbow. The Longbow is a very solid weapon. However, there's a couple things that hold it back from being top tier. The Longbow has a solid rate of fire and it can typically sh pump out a ton of shots before you actually need to reload. However, the bullet drop is hard to control at longer ranges and it takes its own, and it takes its own adjusting to. If you really want to get lead with the longbow, you'll have to spend some time practicing it and the bullet drop associated with it. The longbow, however, has a very high damage per bullet and a very high headshot multiplier, especially when combined with a sculpture or rifling. You'll be chunking down opponents if you manage to secure a headshot. However, this can be skill, but I mostly find it associated with luck at these longer ranges. And if you're trying to go for longbow quick scopes in a close range, you'll find yourself struggling because the ADS speed is so punishing with the longbow. You can basically only use it when moving around, slide jumping, zip line hopping, or sliding around. It's not really too reliable to use, and you can just use other weapons like the wingman, who have a faster fire rate than the longbow to actually get this job done. However, the last thing that brings the longbow to a viable weapon is the large magazine size. Should you get adjusted with the bullet drop, you can actually outpour a lot of damage, but it requires a lot of setup. And in close range, you'll typically be punished a lot more, as its hip fire is nowhere near as good as something like the charge rifle. Up next, we have the alternator. The alternator is not bad at all. The alternator is very similar to the Mozam. It is extremely good off drop, but manages to fall off later. But the alternator falls off because of its extremely slow fire rate. While the weapon is relatively easy to control and can output a lot of damage, it's time to kill really sets it off from other weapons. If you are keeping an alternator in the late game and your opponent has something like a car or a volt, you'll typically find yourself outclassed if both of you guys hit all of your shots. Additionally, the bullet drop on the alternator is pretty bad and pretty hard to control. You can only really use a 2x on it if you are on MNK. It's a lot harder to do on controller. The alternator is also extremely good off drop and in the early mid game because of its ammo efficiency. You won't be chewing through ammo like you will with the R99, the slow fire rate guarantees that. But as I said earlier, the low fire rate and the moderate damage per bullet makes it kind of suffer against purple and red armors in the late game. And overall, you should be looking to swap the alternator out late game, but in the mid to early game, this weapon can do just fine. Up next, we have the worst ground loot shotgun, the Mastiff. Sadly, the Mastiff has fallen from power and it's been nerfed pretty heavily. The Mastiff has potentially high damage. As you can see here, I can land 100 plus damage shots, but it's not very realistic. If you use the Mastiff at all recently, you've probably realized that it does not feel that great to use. Most of your pumps will result in things like 44, 33 damage, or anything like slightly higher or below that. And overall, this average damage output compared with the low magazine size that's been nerfed really makes the Mastiff stand out as a pretty 
underperforming shotgun. It takes a lot of skill to use, and you get more value out of using something like the Peacekeeper or even A instead of the Mastiff. Additionally, the Mastiff has a long time to rechamber between each shot. This can make the gun really punishing in sustained fights. While you can reload and shoot one shot, you're typically better using something like the Peacekeeper in the situations because the rechamber time is actually shorter than having to do it on the Mastiff. I will say, however, that the Mastiff does excel in late game because you'll typically get more value with the Mastiff against higher armor values than you would the Mozambique. So, while the Mozambique's good early game, you can typically rely on the Mastiff a little bit more late game, but still, opt for one of the other shotguns, but if you can't find them, go ahead and rock the Mastiff instead. Up next, we have the final weapon in D tier, the R99. R99 feels great to use, don't get me wrong. I will not deny that fact at all. However, the R99 has an extremely high fire rate combined with a very low damage per bullet output. This makes the weapon extremely reliant on attachments. So magazines become extremely important with the R99, where with the car, who is less reliant on magazines, has an easier time finding said magazines. The R99 has a slightly lower time to kill than the car, but has a lot more steps required to go through it to actually achieve it. The R99 chews through ammo and only uses one ammo type, and you will typically find yourself needing to pick up more ammo in the middle of a match no matter what. Even if you're poking or fighting actively, you'll still be running out of ammo no matter what. Additionally, the R99 struggles really badly against fortified characters and higher armor level values. So for example, the Gibraltars and Newcastles are extremely hard to one clip or even really fight because of the because because of the weapon's low damage output. And especially against red armor, the R99 wasn't really designed to fight against red armor. It, it was really good back in the early seasons of Apex when everybody on a, on average had lower armor values such as white and blues. But now that most people find themselves having purple or red armor, the R99 the R99 hasn't really caught up sadly. Now we have our final tier, the D tier. These weapons are still usable. However, these weapons typically are unreliable in engagements and are typically detrimental to try and keep using and running. Basically, drop these weapons for upgrades as soon as possible, as these weapons will instead cost you the game instead of actually enable. At the very top of this tier list, we have the Hemlock. The Hemlock doesn't have a solid identity. The Hemlock really suffers against basically every other gun in the game. It doesn't excel in close range and loses to ARs and SMGs. It doesn't excel in medium range as it loses to ARs. It doesn't excel in long ranges as it loses to snipers and ARs and the list kind of goes on. There's not really a situation in which the Hemlock is super great and when I tr find myself trying to force myself to run it, I'm typically just disappointed. The, hip the Hemlock's hip fire and spread feel unreliable and not really too great to use. The damage output feels completely fine. So I imagine the Hemlock needs a slightly faster fire rate or some other buff to how it feels to actually make it a viable weapon. It's not that the Hemlock is bad, it just doesn't excel in any areas where all other weapon types and classes excel in. Up next, we have the Sentinel, our last sniper to cover. The Sentinel suffers from a lot of the same problems that the Longbow does. However, the Sentinel, on top of the quick scoping and strafe problems, also suffers from the fact that its damage output is slightly higher at the cost of a longer downtime in between shots. So should you miss one shot, you will be extremely punished for it. While the Sentinel does have Deadeye's tempo built into it, most of the time you won't be firing at its maximum speed. Additionally, the Sentinel has an extremely small magazine size, and this can be really punishing when trying to use it in medium ranges when you're pressured. Even with a gold magazine, the Sentinel feels like it could use a few extra bullets in the chamber. On top of this, the Sentinel wants you to use shield cells to enable its true power, the charged Sentinel, which does more damage. However, this, in my opinion, is a scam. You Shield cells are very valuable in certain situations, and if you're carrying too many of them, you're not giving yourself enough room for things like batteries or grenades. So having to chew through your limited supply of shield cells is a very dangerous thing to do, in my opinion. The Sentinel just falls short to all the other weapons, however, it is still extremely fun to use should you be looking to use it like a shotgun. Just be ready to be extremely punished when you miss those individual shots. Up next, we have the Devotion. Up next, we have our remaining energy weapons, and we'll start with the Devotion. The Devotion has low damage per bullet, but a very high magazine size. 
It, being an energy weapon, uses a rare ammo type and has poor ammo efficiency because of, because of its low damage per bullet and its high fire rate. Additionally to this fire rate, it has a large spin-up to get to its maximum effectiveness. This spin-up effectively prohibits the gun from being very good at challenging other fully automatic based weapons. Unlike the Havoc, it's hard to actually pre-fire with the Devotion because you're actually wasting your ammo reserve which will be used to actually fight people. Where with the Havoc, you can actually just keep the charge steady consistently over time and not really lose anything other than maybe your audio cue. This large spin-up time prohibits it from actually being able to challenge other weapons. And even should you throw a turbocharger on it, it still has to spin up a decent amount. So you can't even really challenge other ARs in the medium range. You can't challenge SMGs in the close range unless they missed their initial magazine, which requires the enemies to be bad or for yourself to not get caught off guard which is not a good thing to rely on. However, the Devotion does benefit against people in the open. Should you find yourself wide swinging an opponent, the Devotion is extremely good if you can get the jump on them. Additionally, if someone wide swings you, if you can focus on staying alive and let the Devotion shoot, you'll typically be winning the engagement with your opponents should you stay alive and not take that much damage. However, that's all I really have to say about the Devotion. There's not really too much going for it. For our next energy weapon, we have the Triple Take. The Triple Take is by far the worst marksman weapon. It has a rare ammo type and has poor ammo efficiency. It uses three bullets per shot, as indicated by the name. The weapon is extremely volatile, being able to land 102 damage head against targets with no helmet. However, this volatility is not really consistent much like the mastiff while you can hit big shots it becomes very difficult to as targets are moving around and you have to strafe very well to actually predict where their head is going to go there's also lots of downtime in between each shot with the precision choke you have to wait for your choke to charge before shooting faraway targets and if you don't you typically won't get these high damage shots and you'll be poking at enemies and chipping away at their armor more than actually dealing enough damage and with the weapon's poor ammo efficiency, you don't really want to be doing that anyway because you'll find yourself running out of ammo extremely quickly. I don't really have much else to say about the triple take. It just really falls short and is kind of disappointing as a sniper rifle and as a marksman weapon due to, its, due to what prohibits it from being really good in comparison to the other weapons. Up next, we have our last energy weapon, the L-Star. The L-Star, once again, uses a rare ammo type and has poor ammo efficiency due to its really high fire rate and fast firing bullets. The L-Star does have a high ammo capacity. I say ammo in quotations because it doesn't really have a magazine. It just overheats and has to be cooled down for a short period of time before actually being used again. But you can manage this very well and juggle your opponents like so to not actually have to deal with the overheat at all. And this overheat grows bigger, which each magazine it has. The L-Star suffers because it doesn't really have a uniform recoil pattern. It can't really be used in these long ranges because its spread and recoil pattern are overall pretty difficult to use, and you get more value using another weapon like an AR anyway. The slow handling times associated with it because it's an LMG can really set the weapon back and doesn't make it and doesn't really make it feel great to use. The hip fire can be really good in certain situations, but above the close range, it feels pretty awful to use and you're mostly just chipping away at opponents. Like the triple take, the L-Star just doesn't really shine in any areas right now where it once used to with its damage and magazine output. Here's hoping that it'll get a tweak in the future that actually makes it a bit more viable as a suppressive close range weapon. And now for the final weapon of our tier list, the Humble P20. The P20 is the only weapon in this list that I say is not really viable in any situation. The, hammer, the P20 is only really viable if you're using something like hammer points. But considering those aren't in the game anymore, the P20 is just kind of useless and here. It has poor ammo efficiency, low damage, inaccurate hipfire, and ADS, and just doesn't really serve a purpose. This is the number one gun you should always be dropping. You should never really be trying to use it unless you're going for a fun challenge or difficult game overall. Even with a magazine, it can't really output too much damage, and it's not really the greatest off rock either due to its inaccuracy and unreliability. Not really too much else to say about the P20. It's the freaking P20. What do you want me to say about it? 
thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out a ton as I put a ton of effort into making this tier list and making this video overall. It wasn't really easy to explain my thought process behind why each of the weapons are good or bad, and it took a lot of takes and retries to do. Additionally, on screen is a list of my YouTube channel members. All of them got early access to the infograph before the video was even made, and additionally, they got two-day early access to this video before you got to see it. So, if you want to support me greater and actually get early access to this, be sure to join for only $2 a month and join the Discord server. There's more instructions in there below, and if you need any help, I'll be more than happy to help you. Additionally, there are more resources in my Discord that you can use to help you improve and just overall help you in general try and learn Apex and to get better. Finally, if you like my kind of content, I also stream live on Twitch five days a week at twitch.tv slash wraithbrew. It's spelled slightly differently than it is here, so make sure you're going to the right account. There's a link in the, in the description below as well. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will hopefully see you guys in a future video when I do another one of these.